As we are nearing the end of our very first season, we want to say thank you. Thank you to our listeners for being devoted, for giving us a chance, and for having an open mind. Considering that the holiday season is slowly approaching and that there's only two episodes left to our season, we decided to end the season off with episodes focused on love. You will find out what made us say this. Your thought process, your critical thinking, everything doesn't exist. It's just like, you know what? I'm hurt and I'm hurt to the extreme. Let me get back at them. No one's no one's being rational in that moment. You know what I mean? Because right. love, love is a crazy thing. Love is blind and love will blow your mind. <laughs> Thank you, y'all. Please stay safe and have a merry, merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to... What is this place called again? Queer. Oh, queer. The dungeon. <laughs> the sex dungeon. The sex dungeon for queers. Welcome back. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, we are on our second last episode. And do you know what? Actually, would we call this our last episode? Because it's a... What? How you say it? Two-parter. What? Two-part episode. We're going to be talking about it's love. Two for one. Two for one. That's a deal, girl. A double dicker. A double, you're getting double dick dogged down on a Tuesday. D D D D. <laughs> double dick. Do- yeah, I like that. So, since we are, have had so many memories in this tiny, tiny room with these mic things that kind of look like dicks right at our face, does anybody have any solid memories that they want to look back on or reminisce? I feel like you're going to talk, so go ahead. <laughs> I am reminiscing about the very first time that we all stepped into this room. Uh-huh. And I just remember us not knowing what the fuck we were doing. And yet here we are. And now we still don't really know what the fuck we're doing. But it sounds But we're having cute. more fun. <laughs> yeah. Aren't we? Yeah. Um, I think one of my favorite memories is... Um, <laughs> Is no, I'm going to skip. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this. Just <laughs> to hurt anybody's feelings. I think for me, um, one of my favorite memories, sadly enough and awkwardly enough to admit, was that episode where we had the relationship expert. Oh right. Um, solely because I didn't agree with anything that he had said, and I found it so hard to like compose myself and not like drag him through the mud. I love it. Do you know what I mean? And I, like I think I came across okay, but that was that well, I was... mean not now if he's listening. Who the fuck cares, girl? Bye. Okay, I think my favorite moment actually is was outside of this room, but me and Jamal were having a conversation. I was at the chalet and I was sitting on a canoe having this conversation. Oh my god. And I kept falling in the water and we were having like this serious conversation. And every time I'm like trying not to fall in the water while being drunk, having this serious conversation. Anyway, it went over really well. Were you drunk? I was probably what time was it? It was probably like two o'clock. I wasn't wasted. I wish I got the memo, fucker. Hey, I wasn't wasted. I was just a little bit. T- I'm always a little bit tipsy. So am I. I'm a little bit Alexis. <gasps> <laughs> Who's Alexis? Have Shatario? you never seen Shit's Creek? Creek? Oh, I keep, I keep trying to watch bit. it, but it it does it like it lacks like. So I'm very big on like a uh, severe plot line, and right. if it doesn't have that. It does. Okay, it so the doesn't. Thing is, it gets better. Like the first little bit, it kind of gets a, a while to get its like. Going. Like I, I think it's amazing. I think it's funny as fuck, but it's not the kind of show where I would watch religiously. It's kind of like what right. I call a filler show. Right. Yeah. Do you think Dan Levy deserved to be like hot, like be in the list of hottest man? A hundred percent. Really? And he deserves to have a fucking Oscar. He's amazing. What? He wrote okay, that well, fucking show. He wrote it. I yeah, agree. Well, I don't. I wouldn't say he's like amazing. And I wouldn't say I, the only thing I wouldn't say is I don't think he's the hottest man on earth. Like, Same. It was like when mm. it was like when Blake Shelton. Do you remember when Blake Shelton won Hottest Man on Earth? And I almost well, that's part, a different like, story. what do Blake you think, Shelton. Do you think that Michael B. Jordan? Does, like, yes. See, I think that Dan oh, yeah. Levy is sexier little, than Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. Michael B. Jordan is not what? that sexy. You're what's wrong with you? Michael B. Jordan. He has a nice body, but he's not that like his face is perfect. He, he's yeah, cute. He's cute. Is. It's, he's cute, but he's definitely no Indris Elba, and he's definitely no John Legend. Like, but you think that Dan, Dan Levy, Levy is, is in the same place? As Dan Levy, he, he has that, that that. You're attracted to his personality, though. No, like mind you, I'm not even attracted to like 
white little nerds. Sorry for who I offended just now. Ouch. But um, he does it really well, and he and it's 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 it's. I'm not it's saying good. he's ugly. I'm never Dan Levy. If you're listening to this, I think you are beautiful, but I don't think you are the hottest man on earth. I mean, okay, people's if, hottest man on earth has always been rigged, and I just well, never get it. First of all, the hottest man on earth is probably not a celebrity. Okay, exactly. I I have an idea. What, Dan Levy? If you're listening, <laughs> send nudes. Yeah, and then we will be the judge of who That's is so the what, only way. What you're saying is that his dick size is what makes him hot. Not his size. The girth. The shape. No. The shape. The just cur- his body. The curvature. Just the, just the body in general. Yeah. That's unusual. Maybe the booty hole. Like maybe the booty hole? A hole pick too, yeah. <laughs> so Dan Levy, if you're listening, send a hole pick as well. <laughs> just to make sure. Just to see if if if, uh, if Mr. Alexander is still is still interested after the hole pick. Do you like hole picks? You know, um, they're, good, they're definitely good to see. <laughs> they're definitely good to see prior to. Um, because there's Just a to make what sure could be you know wrong what you're with getting a hole. Yeah, there's just, like no, what could be really wrong with there's a, hole. a lot you can tell about a boy from the from the look of his hole. The, <laughs> the, the, the I, gape. I yes. Oh, so God. for example, so again, for one, the, the whole if you've been fucked by extremely large dicks for a long time, it doesn't right. it doesn't close fully, right? But that's that that's besides the I point. I don't know if I believe that. I I kid I you think not. Sphincters are supposed I, to always close. I kid you not. But listen, it's not even the sphincter; it's the skin around it. It's the, the, the actual oh, okay. closed, the closing skin. But I'm going to take a really long listen, look at my butthole when I get but listen, home. But listen, but listen, but depending on, depending on like how big of a dick you've taken, you end up getting like this dark ring around your hole, which kind what? of, yeah. I don't think that's from dicks. No, it is. I think it's because, from pooping. No, it's because that's the, the size that your, your ass has commonly stretched to. <laughs> I kid you not. I swear to God. I am so going to Google this when I get home. I, Mind you, this is all basic like self exploration. <laughs> but <laughs> so this has no factual evidence whatsoever. It's Didn't I tell you on the last episode that I was a doctor last week? Yeah. So fuck yeah. you. The fuck rings you. of the hole are like the rings of a tree. <laughs> oh, <my laughs> you know, God. you know how how aged it is, like fine wine. That's terrible. Um, talking about holes that you, that you might fall in love with, or or maybe you see a hole pick and then all of a sudden you fall in love. This episode we are talking about love. And relationships. Love. Things that um, most of us are not great at, I don't think. Maybe I'm just talking about my ass or talking about my hole or maybe I'm just <laughs> talking about myself. But I am very not good at relationships. And I know that someone in this room has been in a very healthy relationship for a while. Oh, my God. I've been in a few. Whatever. Oh, my God. A few healthy relationships? Yeah. Oh, my God. I, I was even... in a relationship for eight years prior to the one that I'm in right oh my now. God. I haven't even been in a healthy relationship with my mom. Let alone a person. <laughs> wow. Well, let so, me tell you, it does take a lot of work. Uh, like a lot of like whole work or a lot of <laughs> No, but at the same time it's not perfect. <laughs> right. No relationship is perfect. And I think that's maybe what we're gonna be discussing today. Is relationships we've have we have been in. Any questions about like the perfect relationship that we're looking for one day? Um, all of the things in between and inside and around the whole. Yeah, I think I'm going to be talking about holes a lot during this podcast today. Okay, let's do the first. Co- let's do the first question. What's the difference between um, a normal gay love relationship and a straight relationship? Do you think there's a difference? Um, I think so solely because I feel like gay love has a lot. Of, well, gay love is not unconditional, um, and I feel like a lot of people put us. St- a time stamp on it. And the reason why I say that is because I feel like gays in general, the moment we are not satisfied with something, we give up. Or the moment that something else comes by that intrigues us, we are immediately kind of just intrigued by that. And it often causes us to kind of just gravitate towards mm. that intrigueness. Um, whereas I feel, at least from all the straight men that I know, when they when they call a woman their fiance or their girlfriend or anything, they're they're in. They're in for the long haul, right? They don't they don't plan to cheat. They don't plan to have this relationship break up after a while. Whereas with us, we can be dating for three years and it's still not solidified. You know what I mean? We're still not thinking about marriage. But for some reason, straight men, it's like the moment they get into a relationship, they're hoping for the best. This may be their wife. They immediately want to start talking about buying a house 
all that kind of stuff. Whereas for us, it's about like, let's have fun. Let's have, let's fuck. Let's go to the club. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because the straights, trademark, um, <laughs> that's kind of like their, like what they have grown up with, like what their default is. Like every straight knows that like they're going to grow up, get a job, find a significant other, buy a house, have kids. Like that is their, like literally what their like to-do list. Right. in life whereas i think in the queer community we had to be a little bit more unconventional because we can't do those things like we can yes with means of like adoption and all that whatever but like i'm saying like that that's just not what the standard lifestyle that a lot of queer people want i also think that i like i disagree with you so hard jamal sorry i'm so sorry <laughs> Uh, the reason I disagree with you so hard is I think maybe maybe 10 years ago, like t- like gays that are 10 years older than I am, have a very specific way of being queer. There was because like it wasn't it wasn't put on TV. You didn't see queer love the same way that you see it now. You don't you never saw that those relationships existed. You didn't see that marriage was even accessible at a certain point in your life. So like, why would you ever think about pushing forward for it? Like, why would that be the next expectation that you're thinking? All of these things that brought up ways of being like, this is the lifestyle that we're supposed to live and that our lifestyle doesn't um adhere to the same way as like gay life or straight lifestyle is but now i think that we have this like expansion in relationships that's happening with straight people and queer people of queer people being like oh maybe i can just like buy a bungalow house in like small town calgary alberta and like and like live and play like overwatch with my boyfriend and then just go to sleep at a reasonable hour and watch real wheel of fortune but then now there's the straights also being like maybe my relationship doesn't have to be like what monogamy looks like or doesn't have to look like exactly the way that um it's been shown on tv that there's like queerness in a lot of relationships now and that i hope that right now there's like a, an expansion happening with the way we see relationships and they they don't just look like a picket like a like a white picket fence and a one and a half children two and a half children one and, two and a half and children half. two and a half damn yes and no so i completely get where you're coming from there's a, there's definitely this evolution when it comes to like at least straights in right. terms of like the relationship structure but one thing that I find has stayed the same is their foundation. Right. Um, so for example, um, they will be in this relationship and they will build their foundation, which is monogamy, which is building a family, buying a house, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But now once that foundation is built, then they would look upon possibly opening up right. things like that. Whereas us, we don't have a foundation. We can, we can, we can be on grinder and immediately it's like, you know what? I'm looking for a boyfriend that's open to the idea of an open relationship. We're not looking for the idea of solidifying love, solidifying monogamy, and then possibly opening up, which to me is the issue with a but lot that's of not relationships. Everyone. That's not everyone. It's the no, it's, it's, it's the majority. Mm, maybe the majority that's on grinder but i mean like i have i have i have friends that have been in monogamous relationships for years and years you're in a monogamous relationship was your lat was your eight-year relationship monogamous yeah yeah i think i think that there is sometimes like a like a stereotype of these things but i also like have like the some people that i work with at the restaurant that are like very very straight and for sure sleeping around and are engaged How and many, like and like and you, you go to like straight club and the straight club and they're just as dirty and disgusting as we are i've seen my let girlfriends do how some many really people, dirty things let me ask you both this yeah. how many people how many gay men do you both know that are married long term and on top of that married with kids long term i don't care if the relationship is open i don't care if they are fluid but how many do you know that are married long term or have kids long term? I know two. Perfect. How many two do you relationships. Know? I know one that has kids. I rest my case. But okay, what's your case though? Because my case is that look at those numbers. Yeah. We 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 are living in a world with millions of people. In Canada alone, we have millions of people. Yeah. And you as a single entity only know two and one. Okay, but wait though, because have you asked yourself like maybe i don't want to surround myself with people that have kids girl bye no i mean let's be realistic you've had many of jobs you've been to many different places in the world where you could have just easily have met them you know what i mean doesn't mean that you doesn't i I never said your friends i never said like you need to be close to these people but the point is that you only know two and one so that ratio 
according to the millions that exist in the world, mm -hmm. how many times we've all been to cruise and tangos and the thousands of people that fucking fluctuate there every day. We only know, you only know two in one. And what'd you say? Three? Two. But, uh, but, but if you go to the people that club, go to cruise and tangos aren't the kind of people that have yeah. like. According to whom? But if you have a three year old kid, it's hard I have, to go to the club. I have a yeah. friend that has kids and is married. He's been married for 10 years. And every week, I kid you not, they're on Church Street partying it up. Their relationship is open, but they're on Church Street every week partying it up. And they have the kids? Sorry? Do they have kids? They have kids. Cute. They have two kids. Actually, no, I know two people. Do you guys know Merchy P? No. No. So back in the day when I was like my uh, young little spring chicken, um, the, 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 the big black parties used to be thrown by this guy named Merchy P. And he had kids. Like he, he's, he's, he's definitely not a spring chicken, but his son was like fucking 25, 26 when I was growing up. Oh shit. Yeah. And like, so like I get where you guys are coming from, but when, when the numbers don't relate, do you know what I mean? Like, I, I get how we all can be so progressive with life, but when, when no one in our community is showing this long-term statistic, to yeah. me, it doesn't exist. The only, the only thing that I will add to this and then we can, then we can go forward is that like the kids, like kids are harder to get when you're, when you're gay. You can't just, you can't just accidentally get it's somebody expensive. pregnant. It's expensive. And you can't mm -hmm. just accidentally get somebody pregnant. Costs like fifteen to twenty five thousand dollars just to do just unless like if you're adopting around fifteen to twenty five thousand if you're doing uh artificial and insem or artificial insemination it can be up to like thirty five thousand dollars fifty thousand dollars you know the av you know the average down payment on the house is at least thirty thousand dollars right but yet we find a lot of queer males nowadays buying houses right if you have the means to buy a house you have the means to find a surrogate mother no but then you couldn't have a house and and have and a child according right? to whom according to the people. <laughs> <laughs> like the straight people don't have to buy a house and then also drop fifty thousand dollars. Of course they do. No, they don't. On what? They literally just what? have a baby. Oh, sorry. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Yes. I, I miss. I misunderstood. <laughs> that. I misunderstood that. But if you have the means to save thirty thousand dollars, you can save another thirty thousand dollars. That means you're not struggling in life. And also, there's a huge change in people wanting children. But this isn't about kids. Mm -hmm. This episode is not about kids. This is about relationships and love. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in love? Yeah. How many times, when, where, what, like? I've been in love twice. Oh, cute. Like, truly. Like, true, true love. And truly, yeah. Um, I don't think that it happens all the time. Like, I think you really, it, like, it's, for me, it's, it, I can look back on it and be like, yeah, all my times that I have either been in a relationship, like, I know which one was love now versus right. back when i was in it i was like mm, i love you like no that's <laughs> yeah. not real oh, i love you yeah what about you jamal i've been in love once mm. do you want to explain any part of the love like what <laughs> <laughs> like how old are you uh, how old are you when did how that happen in love? um the only person i loved was my ex of four years so i was roughly 21 when we got together nice Mm -hmm. I don't know if I've ever been in love. I pretty like I know I've been in like severe like, and I think even my last boyfriend like for sure like loved a lot of things about our relationship, but don't know if like we were in love. Um, love is also like so complicated and feel and you feel it in so many different ways that like you can love somebody, um, you can love somebody and like <laughs> that, that sounds so cliche. You can love somebody and let them go because it's you know it's just not the right love oh my god um but to be like in love with somebody i think would take like so much for me to to do well wait okay so let's all take a moment to kind of describe what love looks like mm. to you so like to be 100 percent in love with somebody what would that look like to you so i used to always think that like i'd be able to poop with the door open when i love. really really love somebody <laughs> Girl. Now, now I agree, now I don't agree with that. I don't think that's what it is. <laughs> but I think there's just like every moment there's no matter what you want them there and not that you need them there, but like every moment, how do I explain this better? Every moment you think that your life wouldn't be as good if they weren't there. Mm. Like I think that my computer being on like I have a double bed and my computer takes up half of that bed and I take up the other half so I can watch my TV shows. <laughs> If somebody could come into my life and be better than my computer, mm -hmm. my computer shows me porn. I can watch all the reality TV I want. I'm watching so much British Bake Off right now. It's unreal. I can fall asleep with it still talking to me and it not get mad at me in the morning. Mm -hmm. 
and sometimes it helps me do work and makes me like <laughs> comparing love to a computer it makes me more myself every day right so you're comparing love to this the shows love how much i your this computer. shows how much love i've had in my life well, we love to see it jamal but, <laughs> what is love to you um love to me is extreme comfort um so through the thickest of times through all the trials that you may go through you still see that person beside you so no matter how mad you guys may get it's never a question of should i leave it may be a question of should i be on the couch but at the end of the day you go to bed and you wake up knowing that at the end of the day that person is your support um so for me it's like love to me feels like a kidney does that make sense so like yeah so like i can't like i can't get rid of you so in the event that i'm going to work if i have a rough day you're the person i'm leaning on right whether it just be simply just venting or coming to for advice i'm coming to you you know what i mean um if i'm having a good day same idea if i need to brainstorm an idea for work I'm going to throw it upon you. That person is my support system. They are my back. They are my spine. When it gets to that point, I know it's love. And like I said in our prior episode, if I can find pleasure off of seeing you at the other end of the couch and asking you for the remote, I know it's love. So cute. That's cute. What Thank you. you. You're welcome. I'm here every day. <laughs> I live here. Mm-hmm. What about you? J-Hope? <laughs> for me... Uh, I'm going to keep it pretty simple um, because in my experience, I truly think that love, like love to me is when someone else's happiness is more important than your happiness. I think that that's love. Right. So if you just get really, really happy and just really excited to see that other person like really happy and excited, that is love to me. Hmm. And that you can take that in any different way. Like it can be as as minimal and minuscule, like as whatever. Like just right. I don't know, making coffee. The word the, the word was, was minuscule. Yeah. Did I not say that? You you, you struggled a little bit, but it's minuscule. <laughs> minuscule. I, there you go. <laughs> Thanks. So now you're an English teacher. Can you say it to me in Spanish? Alexander Jamal, can you spell it? <laughs> oh, bitch. Mm. The drama. <laughs> I yeah I love it love is I think the funniest thing about it is it's so fucking complicated mm-hmm. and like I think love also for me is knowing that you could that you could, you know so much about that person that you could hurt them so hard mm. but every day you don't as well or you try not to that that like you love them so much that you have all of this ammunition to destroy them but instead you like you want to make them happy every day that's very dark. But isn't it true? Like you could li- like you know so much about a person that you can literally like some like my exes, they could say they they know like ten things that could have just thrown me off the deep end. Yeah. But instead of doing that, they they had a conversation with me or told me that they loved me or something like that. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, and it's the worst example of life. But let's say, for example, when Rob Kardashian posted <laughs> Black go. China's nudes, does that mean that he didn't love her? Was that after they broke up? Yeah. No, I think that's still, I think that you, you have that ammunition. You can hurt them. And like, you can see how much, how hurt he was because he loved her so much. Wasn't he just being petty? But see, the thing is, I find that people that are truly in love, when they're hurt, they go to the darkest place right. ever. And that's not an excuse for what he did. I didn't, like, I didn't, I didn't even really know this. Like, it's not an excuse. You can't just say because I loved her so much, I really needed to hurt her. That's fucking bullshit. You're still a fucking asshole. It's not that but, he needed to hurt her. It's that you're, you're, your subconscious goes out the window and your your thought process, your critical thinking, everything doesn't exist. It's just like, you know what? I'm hurt and I'm hurt to the extreme. Let me get back at them. No one's no one's being rational in that moment. You know what I mean? Right. Because love love is a crazy thing. Love is blind and love will blow your mind. <laughs> Speaking of love is blind, what do you guys think of like love reality TV shows? Do you think they actually work? Like, do you think that there's ever a moment where you watch them and you're like, this is real? No, absolutely not. 
But that being said, because I think we all know what goes into like a production. Right. So nothing about those things are real. But at the same time, did you guys ever watch that show? I forget what it's called right now, but it was on Netflix. Love is Blind? Is that what it's called? Yeah. The one where they were in the boxes? Maybe, yeah, but then there's the, the two boxes. of them that are still together. Yeah, I yeah. just, I two, just read two an of the couples are still are still or, together. No, like I mean, one of the couples is still together. No, two and, of the couples are still together. Oh, Giovanna, G A G I A N A, whatever her name is, and that that weird uh, ginger guy, and then the black girl and that white guy. Yeah, so I'm talking yeah. about the the black girl and the white they guy. They were an awesome couple. So yes, yeah, so I just read an article that said that they were celebrating their second year anniversary, uh, and I was like, wow, like it really worked out for you, even though it, like. That show was so fucked. It was so fucked. Do you think love is blind? Yeah. In what sense? Like that you, like, it's like love at first sight, you know, like no matter what that person does in the future, after you like fall in love with them, that like there's a blind love that you, that you'll never stop uh, loving them. So after you know them, yes. Mm-hmm. Before you know them, no. Because I find that everything that we do in terms of attraction as human beings is all based on the visual. Right. Um, so once you get to know that person beyond the visual, cool. Now it's blind. But let's say, for example, if it's like a blind date situation, right. you can't go in there possibly finding love at first sight because a lot of our actions in terms of dating and navigating relationships is based off of physical so i find that once you give that check mark on the physical then it could be blind at that point it's not even blind it's a contradiction but anyway isn't Uh, there um wasn't there a thing that like when you are in love like obviously like the the love chemical that's in your body or whatever i think they did a study that it like once the chemical is released in your body it's like the same as being like on crack or something so like uh, pheromones no, like it, no, like, like there's an like actual, an addiction. there's an actual like chemical that um your body releases sperm. No, <laughs> uh, when it's in love, and I think that like that ties into love being blind because right. you j- can't really make rational decisions. You can't really look past discharge. Like, no, <laughs> <laughs> I this is this has been science with queer. Um, but I agree with you. I agree with you. Like at the moment, I remember <laughs> I saw my my ex boyfriend. I remember seeing him, like, I told this story before on here, but he was at a hot dog stand buying a hot dog at the end of a nice night at a thing called Hot Mess in Calgary. And I looked over and I saw him earlier and I was like, that's a cute boy and I think we might get along. I looked at him and then I do a head nod. I did a head nod. And, uh-huh. and I went, and then he he's looked like, at me. Are you okay? And he's, <laughs> so he's like, what the, what the fuck are you even doing? And I was Correct. Like, oh, I just came to say hi. I was just going to say hi. He's like, then say hi. And I was like, that was the, that was the way we kind of fell for each other in that moment of being like, how quirky and awkward and oh, I am. And then him just like calling me out on being stupid. And I was like, that's amazing. But then also our love was really shoddy. Like it was like, we were eight months away from each other in different cities. And then when we got together, it was like, it worked, but it still was like, we're both finding our footing in a new city and a new space. And you're, you know, when your environment changes, your personality changes in a lot of ways. Cause you have to adapt. And and it just didn't work at the end. And then I did do shitty things to hurt his feelings. Yes. Yeah, so as you mentioned that, um, I think just popped into my head that like, because love is so complicated that so many of us love in different ways. Could it be that the reason why like you guys didn't work out is because your kind of love and his kind of love just didn't like compliment each other? I think the circumstance that happened was the reason why, why we fell out of love very quickly because he was a very, he did a very shitty thing. But I think, think to your question yeah that i that i think we loved very differently Mm -hmm. and because we love so differently it if that shitty thing didn't happen we still wouldn't have worked out at the end like i knew like and i knew that and i guess i really wish that i think that's one thing that i see in love and relationships is that you really do have to be honest with yourself like there's a lot of moments that you think that you can just be like no we can make this work but like there's a lot of times where you have to be like is it worth it like is it worth it so does it make that point though I want to ask you guys at what point is love not enough do you know what i mean like if you're if you're going through a relationship where you're being tried you're you're facing all these tribulations at what point is your love not strong enough to outweigh the negative Hmm. can i go first Yeah. yeah sing it um 
I think I'm very naive with my answer because I my, that same ex that I was in love with at one point said to me, and the first thing that comes to my mind when someone says love is not always enough is a Tony Braxton song. Yes. Um, so immediately I'm like, okay, bitch, stop quoting lines. But I find that if you truly love somebody, to me, that's enough, right? I think everything else can be fixed. Everything else can be worked on. But you cannot work on love. You cannot teach your mind. You cannot teach your heart. You cannot teach your conscious to love somebody or to fall out of love. Some mm -hmm. fall out of love with somebody. And for me, that's why love will always be enough. Everything else is fixable. Everything else is moldable. So for me, it's like no. If I'm in love, no matter what kind of trials you throw my way, I will get through them. Right. But it's always like, you know, in that moment, like you meet that person, you're like, oh, this shit's hitting different, you know, like not the sex thing. Not, <laughs> not it could be that, too. But you meet somebody and you're like, oh, this hits different. This feels different. There's something about it that is more than something that I usually feel. And I think when I'm there, I can work towards something. But I hate that sometimes I like start off on a square being like, eh, I don't know. And then like trying to and then six months in being like, yeah, I love you so much. And then being so awfully bored. That's so my manipulating side come out. Oh my god! I just want everybody to love me. Okay, wait, but back to <laughs> Jamal's question about love being enough. Like, yeah. I think that yeah, love can be enough. But like, I've known um, friends that they've been in like long term relationships for I don't know, like five plus years, and in the end, like they're not together now, but. I know that they still have love for each other, but they oh, just yeah. didn't work romantically. So I also believe that love can change over time. Like mm -hmm. you can love somebody romantically and we can like, you know, go at it, whatever. And then let's say like we just are not compatible. But then my love for you that once was romantic is now changed to like, a different way are like i i would still like say oh yeah yeah like i still love him because we we had all these times together blah 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 but like i know that it's not gonna work and i think sometimes it goes back to like it could be anything it could be like something happened like cheating it could be just you guys fall out of love like romantic it could be anything like right. that but like the amount of time that you spend together obviously doesn't it doesn't doesn't get erased. No. So you can't be like, okay, but you love me, right? So right. we need to stay together. So like in that way, like love isn't enough mm -hmm. because they tried, right? Yeah. Are you still friends with any of your exes? No. None of them. Are you friends with any of your exes? My best friend is an ex. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm friends with a lot of my exes except for one. But I think because you're like such a you're such a friend. Like, I feel like Great, you can't. Awesome. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks. I really enjoyed that. I really, that makes me feel really good. Okay. But you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I almost, I almost feel that you can't, like, you, from what I know about you, you can't yeah. not just cut somebody off and just be like, no, it's whatever. awful. And I watch my ex do that. And I, and I, like, it's shocking to me. Like, I, I understand that, like, our relationship ended kind of shitty, but then it's like, you have all of these friends that were connected to you and then all of your friends start unfollowing me off of Instagram. And then uh, you stop talking to your friends in Toronto that were friends with me. And like, I should have noticed because he did this with his last relationship. Those three years that he was dating somebody three years before me. Like I never knew anybody that I didn't even meet that guy's or hear that guy's name ever. So it's like, I don't know what the line is of like having to like cancel that love out of your life so hard that then you can, push your love onto somebody else i don't know if that's maybe what it is like now he like moved in with a boy and he's super happy also a black artist with tattoos and a nose piercing and uh which is kind of weird <laughs> uh not saying anything but saying something and uh so i i don't know like maybe i guess that's like maybe a different love language is right yeah is that he needs to extract everything out of his life to find love again when i'm like i really love having those people in my life because i think i had them there for a reason mm -hmm. But then some people may think like, yeah, so in, in your case, like you're fine with keeping them in your life and having them like having that love turn into a, like a friendship love. Right. Whereas some people may need like they can't have you there because then it brings back all of the memories and all the stuff that you guys had, like when you guys were once right. together. I, I never understood that. Though. Okay. So 
little TMI. So me and the same ex that I was talking about that I was in love with, um, we had like, actually, as years went on, we became very cordial. Um, we tried to date again, never worked out, blah, 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 but we became very cordial. And then there was one day where he literally just snapped on me and was like, you know what? I can't talk to you. Why did he snap? I'm, my assumption was that because he started to feel feelings again. Mm. Like it was just like, it was so far fetched and out of nowhere where it was just like, bitch, what? Right. Um, and I kid you not, we haven't spoken ever since. Mm. Um, but where I'm confused is that why can't you move on from a relationship and understand that what you guys had is a positive, right? And regardless of whether or not you guys are still together, especially if this relationship was long term, the lessons learned are or should weigh so much more than anything else you're thinking of so it's just like yeah it may be hard to move on and it may be a little bit like taunting in a sense but once you finally move on it's just like there's no one there there's no better connection than uh, in terms of friendship there's no better connection that you can have with a friend than someone that you have dated because they know you through and through mm. right they know your they know your tics as a boyfriend and they also know your tics as a friend and i find that the reason why me and my best friend are best friends is because we dated, right? So he knows me through love. He knows me through friendship, all that jazz. So it's like, if there's anyone to ask about me, it's my ex who's my best friend. Right. I think sometimes there's like a fear of vulnerability in that though, right? I was just going to say. Like that, somebody like, has all the, has all your cards. They don't like that is scary for some people. Like they don't want that around. If, if somebody knows everything about you, mm -hmm. like you said, full circle, they could use that as ammunition or whatever. So right. let me some ask you a question. Don't want Do your friends know feeling. everything about you? No. Not all of them. Oh. But I'm very good. I'm very good at like, I like, and I know this. I've talked to my therapist about it. <laughs> it's like, like I'm very good at giving, like compartmentalizing, giving people, like I've given probably most of the information about my life to certain people in my life, but never all of the, never the full story to one person. Not even, not even my exes that were like, like long term, right? It's, it's like you, I think you, there, you can only give so much information to people sometimes until you know them for a very long, 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 long time. See, I'm different. I'm weird. You like on the first date, you're like, hi, this is all my childhood well, trauma. No, not <laughs> Do you love me? Do you think I'm pretty? Not when it comes to like boyfriends <laughs> and relationships. Please but love me. I, I, I find that if you're my best friend or if you're like a really close friend, you should know majority of what there is to know about me except for what I'm doing in the bedroom. Do you fart in front of your best friend? I don't fart in front of even my boyfriend. Do you I'm fart in front of your boyfriend? I don't fart. Oh, right. So, I don't so even sorry to fart around my mom. That's weird. It's just I don't know, and I know that like, like farting in front of somebody is not love. I know. Like, <laughs> Do you fart around your best friend? No, no. Uh, I don't not. Who fart was in front the of my last person you farted in front of? I've farted in the same room as Kabir, <laughs> <laughs> and then him being like, "Did you just fart?" And I had to be like, "Yeah, I did." But I'm never like whip it. I'm never like throwing a ripper out there, no matter how close I am in a relationship. That's fucking. Funny. But like, there are some people like Vlad wanted it to be like wanted a relationship to be so intimate that like. He could be pooping and I could be brushing my teeth. One, okay. so unhygienic. No, I do not condone that. Yeah. But like, see, that's the different, that's the different types of love that people have. It's like some people want to be in a hundred percent of your space all of the time and like total so his love. He just wanted to be super comfortable enough to do uncomfortable things. I don't think you. it's that. I think that what, I think what that signifies is that they want you to understand that regardless of what's happening in your life, no matter mm -hmm. how, how, insecure you may be or how something may try you as an individual they will not judge you so a lot of times they don't want to smell your shit but they want you to understand that not. even if they did smell your shit they still love you right it's it's kind of reverse psychology in a sense right they want they want you to know that they love you so they're willing to show you that even through your worst they will be there yeah. and on that note i'm going to tell you a story about a day <laughs> i'm nervous <laughs> About a day where I was a young spring chicken driving down the street of Keel Street. Um, me and my ex were driving at the time his mom's van that she had gave to us. And my ex suddenly needed to shit. Oh, no. And it was like coming on hard, right? Area? I, I guess. I kid you not. 
he literally said, Jamal, take the car, take the wheel. And he went into the back of the fucking van and shit in a bag. <laughs> what? Oh, no. Was, I can't believe he was just... so traumatized. Okay, that first of all, your story to tell. Yeah, I was gonna say I can't believe you just. No one knows who it Nobody is. Nobody knows who he is. Okay, anyway. yeah, but he knows who he is, and I'm pretty sure he Bitch, knows. He doesn't want to talk to me, so he can go fuck himself. Oh, see, that's love. Oh my. God. Um, what about living with people? Have you lived with your boyfriends, girlfriends? I lived with two. Yeah. Two. Did you... I've lived with a boyfriend in Detroit, and then I lived with that same guy. Oh, and you're moving in with a boyfriend. Yeah, so I've lived. Um, yeah, in all my long term relationships, I've. So how I've... many boys have you lived with? Uh, 24 three wow seven i'm so three. nervous i'm so nervous to live with somebody i think have i told you guys one of my biggest fears what's your biggest fear i could not handle ever like sharing so when i was a kid i was always i remember like seeing my mom she got in this relationship that was like a long-term relationship and i was like oh now she has to share that bed with someone else forever and i used to go to bed crying what being mean, like wait, wait, what do you mean like because when you're dating somebody you or you're in a relationship and you live with them you usually have one bed right that's how it works what do you mean shit like well like i don't i don't get like it. you have to sleep in the bed with the other person all the time so that so idea like, scared you yeah so like my i'm an only child my all my stuff was mine and i was like i have to share uh, everything with someone else and i was like and they're gonna sleep in my bed every night Recently, I've learned that doesn't have to happen. You don't have to sleep in the same bed every night. You can have a two bedroom and once in a while have your own space. That's but, hot. but I like, I'm like, I would cry as a kid being like, I have to share my bed with somebody else for the rest of my life. So what I got from that story is that you never learned as a kid how to share. <laughs> I hate sharing. Oh my God. I hate it. I hate it. And I, that's a one thing, like in relationships, one thing that you should never do is eat my food. Like off my plate, unless I give you permission. Like, do not eat my stuff. Do not change my TV show. Do not get in the way of me time. And see, this is why I don't think I'm very good at relationships. I'm listening to myself right now, being like, me, 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 me. I just don't think I'm ready. But then, okay, so that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like you'll you'll find that relationship where it won't necessarily want to change you, but you're gonna you're gonna put that person before you, right? Eventually, eventually. And mm. then you're going to be like, oh, you know what? That's love. So wait. On that note, question 14 on my little doc here says, have you ever loved someone who you hoped would change for you? Yes. And I want to add on to that. Have you ever changed for someone? Tried. My very first boyfriend, <laughs> I always talk about him. He was addicted to ketamine. Um <laughs> Shout out to ketamine. <laughs> Shout out to ketamine. He, uh, I just remember I was like 18. He was like 20 or 19 or something like that. And he's this little ginger. He was so cute. I was obsessed with him. I think I've talked about him on this podcast before. And he, I just remember every time I tell people about him, I'd be like, oh my gosh, blank is so cool. He's this and that and the other. And they're like, and I was like, and they're like, but what's wrong with him? I was like, well, he hasn't graduated high school, but it's because he's too smart. Um, but he will, like he will eventually, he's just too smart for it right now. So he doesn't want to do it. Or like, he doesn't have a ketamine problem. He just likes to do ketamine on a Tuesday afternoon. Like that's not a problem. It's just like, it's how he escapes. And I was like, oh, he lives in his parents' basement, but it's not because he, he like can't afford a place. He works three jobs. It's just because he likes his parents' basement. And I look back and being like, and then like all the time I would be like, Hey, blank. Do you think maybe going back to school would be good? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it eventually. Okay. Hey, do you think maybe not doing ketamine on Tuesday would, would be awesome? He's like, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about it. And I would continue to try to just like ask these things and like hope. And then when I went to university, I like, I was just like, oh, like you're never going to change. And the second I decided that the relationship was over, he was like, I'm going to do everything. I'm going to change for you. And I was like, I don't want you to change for me. And that's the one thing that was very important for me in any relationship is I don't want you to change for me. I want you to change for you. Mm -hmm. And 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 that's what he wasn't ready for because I, now being an adult or being in the relationship that I've been in, it's like I've tried to ch I've tried to change for the other person. I tried to change for my ex for Vlad. I like tried to be the best, like the best communicator, the best whatever he needed. But, like I just wasn't ready to to do any of that. Right. So when you're not ready. That I don't think like, yeah, you can be in like different types of, of relationships that'll kind of get you kind of almost ready for it. But I think when you you're finally ready, you as a person and you're like, you know what, I want to make these changes, not 
because I'm going to change myself, but to better myself in order to have a better relationship. Right, because then it's growth. It, yeah, that's my, that was my point. Was it? Thanks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I got really excited, but I, I, I agree with that. I don't. I don't think. I don't think. <laughs> I don't think you can change someone when it comes to love. Um, nor do I think anyone will ever change for anyone for love. Um, it needs to be self inflicted. Um, if someone wants to change anything, like, well, I think there's a natural change that happens within both people. Once you get into a relationship, there's always a change, um, and hopefully most of the time it will be a change for the better to kind of bring your lives together um so that na- that change is natural but now if you're waiting for someone to change to kind of meet you halfway somewhere that's never the case because in order for someone to change who they are they have to truly want to change my thing is i don't understand why people embark on this journey with the expectation or the hope that the person will change. To me, it's like, if you want that person to change anything so bad, maybe you should not fucking be with them. Oh my God. So I have this friend who, that's all she literally does. She like gets into these relationships and she's like, "Mm, I'm going to change him. I'm going to fix him. I'm going to do this. And like, I almost feel like that's just like a, it's, it's a her problem for sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because they don't, like her relationships always end up going sideways because she just doesn't, she always kind of takes them on as like projects. And I'm just like, you shouldn't go into a relationship wanting to change somebody. Like that's, no. that's not it's how never it works. Gonna work. It doesn't work. And if you do, like I've, I've had friends that have been in relationships where, yeah, they, they will change or, or they have changed. And then in the end, they end up presenting them. Exactly. Right. Because they're like, well, this bitch, because yeah. of course they didn't want to change. So yeah, it's like what you said, that person has to want to change for themselves. Yeah. And I think you said it really well earlier when you were like that part, like the person that you're with, it has to be the right time. You have to have the right type of love and it has to be like the right moment. And if, and if it's not any of those things and you have to constantly, I think like there's an amount of work that you need to put into relationships, obviously, but there's amount of work. That's just like rolling your tires in the mud constantly. Like it doesn't, it doesn't help any, nobody's happy. Nobody's having a great time. Everybody's just trying to like, trying to make to the next day. Mm -hmm. That sucks. It does. But then when you're in the right relationship, it almost doesn't feel like that all the time. Like right. it shouldn't feel like work all the time. Yes, there's going to be give and take. Yes, there's going to be days where like, you know, it feels like you are working, but it shouldn't like you shouldn't wake up every single morning and be like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck this guy. Now I gotta love this person. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's just not. Better put in the work to like him <laughs> again. Uh-huh. What's that? What's that? Um that ig meme that i always see where it's like i don't want to do the work today yeah. i don't, <laughs> don't want to really do, do the work today i don't really want to do the work today i don't want to do the work the today we're talking about i've never seen that i don't really yes, want to do have. the work today I it's don't like really this girl who's like today. in a theater and she's like, yeah it's a musical theater it's like a off-broadway show it's it. amazing it's, it's so hilarious. good we'll show it to you after <laughs> um what do you think makes people fall out of love like, what's the major thing that you think the moment, even like, did you break up with your ex of eight years or did they break? Did who broke up with it? It was like, a, well, I, I guess I did. Yeah, you did. But then in the end, once we talked about it, it was kind of like a mutual thing. Mutual thing. But you know what I want to say about that is I think people, because it kind of like ran its course. So right. for me, I think that people often, especially in the queer community, I think it's like when things get stagnant, I think that's, that's why gays, um, kind of tend to stray and look for like that next best thing that we were talking about is because if things are just going like they're supposed to, or there's no excitement or there's no whatever, then I almost feel like they're like, Oh, well, you know what? Like that, like wanting that excitement, but also pair that with being like a horny male. Mm-hmm. Right. Of course that's gonna, that's like a, a recipe for disaster. Yeah. Cause watching my best friend, like my best friend got married last year to a lady um and aaron and kina if you're listening hi um aaron like they like sit at home and, and i'm not judging the relationship they seem like they are so fucking happy everything's great but like they sit at home a lot of the time after work and like play overwatch one of them plays they have two ps4s one of them plays in one room and one of them plays in the other you're one you're lying no i'm not i love that and they play overwatch together and they were like uh, like when i was there two weeks ago or three weeks ago 
they're like trying to unlock all these like spooky Halloween um I like skins. Love, that's that's and, like, love. And then like at ten o'clock or like not like ten 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 thirty, they shower separately. Then they go into their room and they've PVR'd fucking Wheel of Fortune because they just like oh. it reminds them of being a kid and oh. they just like love watching Wheel of Fortune. Then they go to bed. And I was like, to me, that sounds like I'm like, how do you do this every day out in the suburbs of of Calgary? And they're like. Because we just really love each other's company, and like it doesn't have to be like we're talking all the time and blah blah blah. blah. True. So like that's love. that's a love that I could never really? commit to. No, I have too much ADHD to fucking just be sitting in a house in like but fuck nowhere. See, I, I I have no business telling you about your love life, right. but I I feel like you think that way until it truly happens, right? Like once you find true love, especially if you're living with that person. It ends up just feeling like that person is like your brother in a sense. Like they're meant to be beside you. Do you know what I mean? Like you're not always worrying about what they're doing. You're not always worrying about how happy they are or if they're fed. It's the fact that you two are now a partnership. And regardless of where you are, you know where your partner is. And as long as your partner is off doing what they want to do and they're content and they're fine, you are happy, right? Mm-hmm. Because as a team, you don't need to be around each other 24-7. Right. You don't need to bring excitement to each other 24-7 because realistically speaking, this is life, right? Like you're right. not going to always be fucking dabbling in exciting things 24-7, right? <laughs> so I find that to me, I think that like when you can find a sense of enjoyment in just being content with life with your partner and the stagnant moments to me that's love right and i think that if i always said this like i think if me and vlad moved in together when vlad first moved to toronto i think we would still be together today and i don't know if that would have been a good thing or a bad thing but i think we were at the moment of needing to move in together and i was like oh no <laughs> my single bed by my bed by myself oh. <laughs> but, but back to your question yeah um what do I think makes people fall out of love the fastest? Mm-hmm. Um, to me, I think it's repetition of disappointments. Mm. Um, yes, I think that we as we in the queer community, we definitely walk away when things get stagnant. Um, I try, I, I want to kind of just disregard that because to me, that's, I, I think that's a flaw that we have in our community. And I, I don't think it's something that should be even highlighted um i feel like we should kind of be ashamed of ourselves for doing that but not all queers do that yeah but those that do i think that there's something within that we should figure out and try to work past that that's a flaw um but constant disappointment repetition with disappointment so in the sense that there's something that you're trying to work on um whether it be cheating communication all that kind of stuff when you've exhausted all your options and you've openly exhausted all your options both of you guys have willingly come together and try to try to fix something and nothing gets fixed i find that even within life if if we're going for a job and it's like your 20 or going for a job in a specific industry and it's like your 25th job interview in this industry you're gonna fucking give up Or you're at least going to contemplate on giving up. And I find that it's the same thing within relationships. So if you've been begging for communication for two years, there will come a time where it's like, you know what? Fuck you. You want to go to your room? You don't want to talk today? We're done. Because I've been asking you for two years. And you promised me. Right. There we go. But that's the same thing as like, um, you can't. You can't ex- you can't do something or expect a different result by doing the same thing. Mm. They call that insanity, right? Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I, I and and yeah, I I think that some people think it's just easy to say, like people in relate. Like, and when you're in a relationship with a friend or it, like anything, like sometimes we think it's just like said. You can be like, yes, I'm going to do better, and you can continue to say, yes, I'm going to do better. But until you do something that's actionable, mm. then like I don't believe you. Right. I'm a big firm believer of like actions speak louder than words because right. so many times in my in my past, like it, not even like a romantic relationship, like with friends, yeah. people will say shit and it's like, I don't believe you until I fucking see it. Like you can tell me all you want that you're going to do X, Y, Z or, you know, whatever. But like until I see results, until I see it for myself, like I don't believe what you say. Right. 
Agreed. Agreed. And back to one of the points that you made earlier about like about like gays and their promiscuity and next best thing. It happens with straight people too. I just like this happens in a lot of relationships. It happens mostly with men. Like men are it's men. men are inherently kind of shitty. It's men. <laughs> I don't know why we decided this queer lifestyle where we have to deal with more men. But um but like I watched these this girl that I went to I went to high school with, my best friend is best friends with her, right? She gets married because she gets pregnant. Her parents are really religious. They get married or they get married. They have their kid. They get their, their parents buy them the house because they're poor. Cause they're are they're like 22 at this point, but like they living this like happy lifestyle and they're like figuring it out. They seem very happy. I'm doing a lot of quotation marks here. Um, and then Ar- my friend Arabella, um, she, <laughs> is that her real name? No. Um, <laughs> so Arabella, um, Michael, Arabella. Michael is Michael's the guy that that just that is married, and their other friend Priyanka, um, Priyanka and uh, Michael are are dating. But then uh, Arabella comes in and starts being really good friends with a boy. Okay, even though she's best friends with Priyanka. Okay, <laughs> and all of a sudden these two start banging, even though Arabella's in a relationship and is best friends with the person that's married. What? So okay. they start. <laughs> It's a drama. It's a drama, girl. It's like the biggest talk of Spruce Grove. This is like the Twilight book. Yeah. So the thing that happened that I found really interesting was that like this guy, Michael, kept saying that he loved Arabella and that he was going to leave Priyanka for Arabella. But he has a kid, blah, 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 blah. And there's so many shitty, sketchy things happening. And then some of our friends find out that they're like fucking. And like all of these things, like the rumor mill starts happening. Anyway, she finds out. And instead of breaking up with him getting a divorce she says she demands that he gets her pregnant again so they have a second child okay girl that's mental illness like you can (laughs) or is that like is that love like was she so in love with him that she was like this is the only way that i'm gonna make okay hold on so that is some straight culture shit right there because (laughs) let me let me explain so i know tons of girls that when their relationship is clearly not going right the guy is cheating the guy is doing this whatever it's just not you know roses right. and rainbows and their first initial thought is let's get married as if that's gonna fix things or knock me the fuck up as if that's gonna fix right. your relationship issues none of those things are going to work unless you two want the relationship to work yeah and he's for sure cheating on her with other people like there's no fucking way that you sleep with her best friend and then and then not cheat on her with more hmm. people yeah so then okay so then i want to ask you guys do you feel like cheating is a deal breaker when it comes to love? No. But let's leave that for part two. Okay, pretend I didn't answer. Okay, thanks guys for tuning in for queer. Did you already cancel it? Okay, <laughs> now now you're gonna have to cut this. That's okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> thanks guys for tuning in this week to queer. Um, we will see you next week with part two. Toodles. Toodles. I've never done a flat note in my life. That's a damn lie. I've never been flat. Okay, sing it. Are you are you a trained uh, Ooh, bitch bye. Uh, 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 Match my pitch. Uh, oh, I don't know. I know if I can. I really uh, come on. Uh, uh, spot on. Spot on. Queer. <laughs>